Hi, welcome to Business Computing Weekly. This is episode number 404, and we're going to be interviewing Guy Kawasaki. Uh, we hope you enjoy that. It was a uh, very, very interesting interview with Guy. We talked extensively about using social media for your small business and some of the tools and techniques that Guy uses in order to grow his business. But first, I want to talk to you a little bit about GFI, and in particular, I want to talk to you about GFI Mail Essentials Online. Now, a lot of folks are looking at cloud-based and hosted solutions for different enterprise applications and controlling spam and stopping, you know, uh, phishing attacks and, and, and getting uh, malicious uh, attachments to email, that kind of thing, uh, is a very, very difficult job. And, and uh, you want to do it well. And GFI has an award-winning product called Mail Essentials, and a lot of small business mid-sized companies use Mail Essentials every day, but they'd like to have a hosted version. And you can get a hosted version of Mail Essentials online uh, for a free 30-day evaluation. Come to frugalbrothers.com or give us a call at Frugal Brothers, and we'll be happy to set you up with a 30-day trial of GFI Mail Essentials online. And you're going to deal with spam and phishing and and bad attachments and, and, and it's really an awesome product and it's very inexpensive. It's only a dollar per month per mailbox. So check out GFI Mail Essentials online. I think you're really going to love it. Uh, anyhow, a little bit about Guy Kawasaki. I followed Guy personally for uh, many years now. Guy was the, I believe the first uh, Apple evangelist, Mac evangelist. He started with Apple in 1983 and worked there for about four years before going off and uh, founding a couple of software companies of his own. And his job at the time was to convince software developers to write software for the Mac. And since that time, uh, he has been prolific, especially in social media. And he's authored over a dozen books. His last book is called Ape, Author, Publisher, and Entrepreneur. And he tells you step-by-step -step on how to write a book. He's extremely active on Google Plus and on Twitter. Uh, he, he does a lot of public speaking. And he just did, I just seen a, a, a really great TED Talk that he gave about the lessons he learned from Steve Jobs. And I recommend that if you get a few minutes, you need to check that out. It's a TED Talk from Guy Kawasaki. It is uh, excellent. Uh, he was very gracious to talk with us for about a half an hour. So let's get right to it. This is the interview that we had with Guy Kawasaki. Now we have uh, Guy Kawasaki joining us today from California. Guy is an author, speaker, venture capitalist, and entrepreneur. And Guy, we uh, invited you on the show because we're talking about social media today and the importance of using social media and yep. building your personal brand, your company brand, using social media. And so the first question I have is what advice can you offer small business people in building their brand with social media? The key to building your brand in social media mm -hmm. is always be providing value and for me I think one of the best and easiest ways to provide value is not necessarily creating content but curating content so you find content if you're a restaurant find content that foodies would like uh, if you are running a uh, theater you find content that people who love film would like and so always be thinking of, you know, your customer, your prospective customer, what kind of content would they like to read? What kind of content would they like to view on YouTube? So your job is to find that stuff, constantly providing it to them so you position yourself as an expert. All right. That's a great answer. All right. So let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. There's multiple social media platforms out there. Mm -hmm. And I want to know what – is there a particular platform that you prefer over others or should it be a mix? Uh, I prefer strongly Google plus. I happen to like the people that I've met there. I happen to like the aesthetics of the service. Uh, I also believe that it improves uh, in particular uh, search results. So in, in a sense, the more you post on Google plus, the more search results you'll appear in. And, and that will probably also translate to small and micro businesses also. So uh, I think the big three are Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. Okay, so you recommend that you have a presence on all three? 
Uh, not necessarily. You know, it's easy for me to say as someone who does this every day for hours every day. But if I were also running a restaurant or if I were running a consultancy or you know, running a theater, you know, it might not be so easy for that person to do it as much as I do it. But I, I just consider it part of my role uh, to market uh, via social media. And that's every day. What about LinkedIn? Uh, LinkedIn, I think, is very good for uh, finding jobs, for making biz de development connections. So absolutely, it can work in, in that, you know, that very specific use. Um, if I were a restaurant, would I be on LinkedIn as my top one, providing you know, posts? Probably not. But if I were a headhunter, for sure, if I were looking for a job, for sure. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I hope, you know, there are listeners who are more than restaurants. But again, for a restaurant being on LinkedIn, uh, you know, I can't say that would be my top priority, honestly. And, and Facebook, not as much as Google. Plus. Why Google Plus? Is that because maybe a lot of the users are maybe more technical? Uh, I think they're more sophisticated. Uh, with Facebook, they have this thing called edge rank so that even if someone volunteers to follow you, uh, they may not see all your posts. Facebook decides who of the people who have followed you will see your posts, which I find slightly bizarre because they volunteered to see my posts, right? <laughs> right. So uh, for that reason, and I, I don't know, I just, I like the aesthetics of Google Plus better. Certainly Google Plus has a bigger influence on search results because it's from Google than Facebook. Mm -hmm. All right. You did a lecture, and I've seen this on YouTube, in, uh, no, and it was in 2011. You were at Notre Dame, by the way. Uh-huh. had the Five Guys hamburger, by the way, which are excellent, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were talking about getting your product. You know, there's a way that people, I guess, get their products or attempt to get them no, uh, noticed by going to some of the, the major influencers, presenting yeah. it to their influencers, and opening that kind of gets... They like it. You, you, you give it to the altar of these guys. Yeah. Hopefully you get that thumbs up. But then you, you caught my attention by saying, but you should get noticed by Lonely Boy 15. Yeah. What's the most effective way to do that? Uh, especially if you're a micro business or a small business. Uh, well, you know, that's a little harder. So uh, can I keep using the restaurant analogy? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely up to you, Kai. I, I don't want you, you know, 30 minutes from now, tell me you have no restaurants in your business. Uh, so you, using this hypothetical restaurant, you know, in one sense, you, of course, you want the food editor of your local paper to love your food, right? Mm -hmm. so I'm not saying you should not do that, but I'm also saying that people you never heard of who don't write for newspapers, but, you know, they, they just, they love food and they talk about food all the time. And they are probably just as important. Um, and if, if enough people like your restaurant and tell their small circle of friends so now you're always busy well guess what if you're a really popular restaurant i think the local paper probably has no choice but to review you okay so the question is which came first the reviewer brought people or people brought the reviewer i think it's more and more people brought the reviewer so then as a micro business or a or a you know a entrepreneur then should i be focusing more of my efforts than in um in trying to kind of do this 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 um uh these these folks on the on the lower level in other words you know the lonely fifth lonely boy 15s should i be trying to appeal to them more and, and get this grassroots movement going i i think so uh you know of course it it really depends. I mean, you know, to take a real, should a plumber be spending two or three hours a day on social media hoping to find customers using social media? I would hope not, guy. <laughs> yeah, it's a little dubious, you know, to tell you right. the truth. But for any kind of business that transacts stuff over the internet, I think it is true you should use social media. Well, you know, I've noticed there's a lot of social media gurus out there or present themselves as social media yeah. gurus. yeah. And pretty much you hear kind of a standard thing and, and they say that you need, it's all about building a community. Yeah. Community this, community that. And I get that. Yeah. But how does a micro business build this community? I mean, isn't the end game to, you know, create more business 
I mean, is that really an effective avenue to go? It can be. Again, it depends on the business. You know, could could a restaurant have a community? Yes. Yes. Could a plumber? Doubtful. You know, could a could a pool cleaner have one? Doubtful. But you know, a businesses that um, are of the nature of a restaurant, a retail store, a retail store could definitely have a community. A local theater could have a community. So it's, it's things where, you know, lots of people come to it. Lots of people come to a theater. Lots of people come to a restaurant. But if you're a plumber and you have, you know, several hundred clients a year, it's hard to build the case that you should be spending a lot of time on social media. Well, you know, I, I agree with you. Here's a problem that I have, and, I, and I've noticed, and I'm sure you have too, that there's a lot of people that try their hand at social media, but they do it badly. Yeah. Um, they basically look at Twitter and Facebook and uh, Google Plus as a form of advertising. Yeah. It, it really doesn't work that way, does it? No. Well, it can work that way if you earn the right. But this is like saying, uh, I'll just you know put an ad in the yellow pages and the money will start flowing in. Well, that's not true either, right? Right. So, First of all, it starts with having a good business. Mm -hmm. So that is the key. And then we go from there. Okay. You mentioned that when you are engaging an audience, I guess, yep. or en engaging that you, that you need to tell a story. Yes. Not everybody's a good t uh, storyteller. Yes. I want some tips from Guy Kawasaki on what goes into a good story. <laughs> Well, first, the truth. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> well, well, what I'm saying about telling a good story is that instead of just using adjectives about, you know, curve jumping, innovative, revolutionary, all that kind of stuff, I, I think it's much more interesting, you know, to tell a story, uh, to tell a story about why you started your business or, you know, you did, I don't know, you were, you were, uh, your grandmother was baking cookies and you know, so many people love their cookies that she started a bakery and now you know you're the third generation baker and and you know this kind of story uh, that is much better than saying my cookies are delicious because everybody says their cookies are delicious i mean no bakery is going to go up there and say my cookies suck so I, I think it's a more interesting story that you know you your grandmother started it because you know, so many people loved her baking and you've continued her traditions and now you're all organic and, you know, you don't use any excessive additives, you know, all that kind of stuff is much better than, uh, you know, we have great cookies. So if I'm hearing you correctly, it, it needs to be more about the reason why you started the business, uh, what problem you were trying to solve yes. or whatever, rather than a sales pitch. Yes. It should not be a sales pitch. And you should probably never really do a sales pitch then with social media. Uh, well, I can't say that either. I mean, I think you can do a sales pitch with social media if it's one out of 20, you know, tweets or posts or updates that you have to earn that privilege. It's, it's just like NPR, okay? So NPR, they, they promote, right? They promote sure. your telephones. But they promote their telethons, I don't know, 10 days a year, not 365 days a year. You know, I noticed that you are very prolific with tw Twitter. Yeah. This is a question I've <laughs> that, that I personally want to know. A lot of the content that you, you tweet out about seems to me a bit random. Just, it is random. Okay. What's the, what's the madness behind that? Or what's the method okay. behind that madness? So the madness is that uh, because I've been – you know, working in technology for 30 something years, I, I, well, maybe I'm deluding myself, but I don't have to establish credibility anymore in tech, right? So if I were okay. starting my career, I would focus on a particular niche, a particular segment to establish my reputation in that. But I am so old that I have taken care of that already. So <laughs> now what I can do is I can just be whatever I want to be. And so my, my tweets, and many of them are contributed uh, and ghostwritten, the sole purpose of my tweets is to always have interesting stuff. So interesting stuff could be 
a new recipe to make s'mores. It could be a new, you know, absolutely sick goal that was scored in a hockey game. It could be a story about adoption in Ethiopia. It could be a story about gun control. I mean, I just, I'm always trying to position myself as having interesting stuff. How does that help your brand? Well, because theoretically anyway, or this is my thinking, by constantly having interesting stuff, more people share my stuff, so more people find out about me, so I get more followers. And then um, this is like getting more of an audience so that when I hit them with a promotion, there's more people out there. So is the end game then for you to help you build your business as far as selling books and, and yes. yes social media is a means to an end for me i'm not trying to find more friends i have all the friends i can handle <laughs> and that's i appreciate your honesty on that <laughs> okay but i i really wondered that question you also mentioned about um building trust with prospective clients Yes. Uh, you gave uh, you gave some examples and you talked about, you know, that you have to smile. You have yeah. to be liked by people. Yeah. But, but like the leg of a stool, one of those legs is trust. Yes. Now, a lot of people are doing e-commerce. They never actually meet somebody in person. How do we that are building web based businesses? Uh, how do we gain that trust when what we have to work with is things like phone, email, websites. How do we get, how do we, how can we get around some of this? Well, at, at the, at the simplest level, the way you build trust is to never screw somebody. Right. So, right of course. We're not talking about putting lipstick on a pig. Right. But on the, you know, a, a great example is Zappos. So Zappos was selling shoes online. Right. And, mm -hmm. and it had this great policy that it would pay for, the return of shoes too, not just the shipping of shoes. Mm -hmm. So I think people came to trust Zappos, so they bought more shoes, and you know when they didn't like it, they returned it at Zappos's expense. But they came to trust Zappos so much that now they they will buy shoes, you know, kind of on a whim, and many of those purchases actually stick. So I think mathematically, it must be that by having such a trusting policy, yes, we get more returns, but we also get more sales. And those sales more than cover the returns. That that does make a lot of sense. However, not everything, you know, obviously, like, uh, for example, my primary business is retailing software through the, through the Internet. And yeah. it's a consultative type sales. So it's not a you go to a website and you, yeah. okay, this is what I want, so forth. So I, you know, I, I think I'm kind of a, an advantage in that one because I'm able to answer questions, schedule demos and deliver what I say, but not everything works that way. Like with Zappos, is there anything you should do, be doing, do, for example, um, maybe adding uh, referrals from customers, that kind of thing to your site? Do you think that's a, sure, a, a good sure. way to increase some trust there in, in, in the internet world? You know, of course, word of mouth and testimonials from customers, that's all good. But, you know, at the end of the day, you have to be trustworthy to be trusted. Duh. <laughs> you that know, is very true. You know, it, it's not rocket science. So if you never screw somebody, you don't have to worry about this. Um, you talk about enchantment. You wrote a book about enchantment. Yeah. How do I enchant prospective clients? What are some of the tools that I need to be using to get this kind of enchantment? Well, I, I think in a, in a digital sense, the most valuable tool is, is to use social media and to be constantly providing valuable content so people come to trust you as someone who's knowledgeable so that when they buy something from you, they think they're going to get something good and something that is exactly what they need. So it's building a reputation using social media. All right. You are a busy guy. All right. And uh, so I'd like to know, yeah. what tools do you use to keep up, to keep on top of things? What, what oh. tools do you, do you have? Give us an idea. Yeah, first of all, you know, I'm always behind. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Scratch that I, last question, guy. <laughs> I use Macintoshes. I use a MacBook uh, Pro. Okay. And uh, I, I use 
uh, I'm purely an Android person when it comes to tablet and phone. I use a Nexus 7 and I use a Motorola phone. And I use things like Word and Microsoft Word and Dropbox and Evernote and TripIt. All these things help me become much more efficient. Uh, there are definitely tools to help, but I tell you, at the end of the day, it's about grinding it out. It's about putting in the time. You uh, you work some tremendous hours. I do. I really do. You have no idea. I really do. Just out of curiosity, how many hours a week you figure you put in at your at your business? Oh, well, it's you know how do you count? I mean, I don't go to an office, right? But you know, everywhere that I am, like most speakers right now would be having a drink. What am I doing? I'm doing another conference right after I got off, right? So, right. you know. I don't know, 10 hours a day, but I, it's more than five days a week that I work. And basically, if I'm awake and if I'm not eating and if I'm not with my kids and I'm not playing hockey, I'm working. So, Right, you're a hockey fan. I love hockey. <laughs> um, did you catch a lot of grief uh, from your fans about the switch from iOS to Android? Uh, you know, I, I think a lot of people were shocked, but uh, my loyalty is to whatever I think is best. And I happen to think that Android is better than iOS. So if if they fix iOS, maybe I'll switch back. But, you know, I, I could tell you like six different ways I think that Android is better than iOS. So, Well, I don't want to get uh, – definitely, hopefully, we'll hear from you on that. Uh, maybe you'll take that time to – uh, let us know about that. I also wanted to ask you another question, which is, I know so you use an image of a butterfly quite frequently. Yeah. What yeah. is the story behind Guy so, Kawasaki's butterfly? Well, uh, when I wrote the book Enchantment, it's about how to change you know, thoughts and minds and actions. And I wanted to take people who perhaps weren't as enchanting as they could be or weren't enchanting at all, sort of the caterpillar stage, and turn them into a butterfly. So I wanted the butterfly to symbolize, you know, how enchanting you can be. I mean, who does not like butterflies? You know, I was thinking it was something along those lines, but I wanted some clarification on that. That's thank it. you for, yeah, thank you for clearing that up. What is the next big thing for you? Oh boy, I don't really know. I, I'm, I kind of work opportunistically without a plan. So... <laughs> Right now, I'm advising Motorola. I do a lot of work for Motorola. I don't know what's next. It's, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't plan it anymore. Fair enough. Okay. In your free time, yeah. what do you enjoy reading? Uh, I read mysteries and thrillers. I love uh, books about like CIA, Navy SEALs, spies, uh, terrorists. Uh, Lee Child, you know, Jack Reacher, right? Uh, those kind of books. That's my genre, mystery and thriller. So you're definitely not reading the business books and that kind of thing. Yeah, I never read business books. <laughs> that, uh, and you write business kind of related books. I do. I do. <laughs> but no, that's what you do for a living, and I get that. You, uh, and, and just more of a, 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 a personal kind of question, um, did you ever buy that Mustang that you keep talking no, about? Oh, no. no. <laughs> I, I, I recently bought a, a Porsche Cayenne diesel, though. I thought it was a good compromise. You know, like I wanted a Porsche. Mm -hmm. I wanted something with high mileage. I have four kids. So, you know, all things considered, uh, I squeezed the trigger on that. Well, Okay. You know, Guy, I want to appreciate, I really do appreciate you. Come on, and talking to us a little bit about social media. Uh, the important message is, is that you, you need to be doing it, but you need to be doing it well. And provide, always be providing value. Always, you know, the test in, your, in a person's mind should be, if I saw my tweet, my post, would I be telling other people about it? Would I be resharing, retweeting? That's a very good test. Fair enough. Thank okay. you so much for coming on and uh, talking to us today, Guy. You take care. Bye-bye. All righty. Thank you very much.